U.S. President Joe Biden will meet with Volodymyr Zelensky this week in France and next week in Italy. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said this. While he's in Normandy, he'll have the opportunity to sit down with President Zelensky and have an engagement with him to talk about the state of play in Ukraine and how we can continue and deepen our support for Ukraine. He will also have an opportunity several days later to see President Zelensky again at the G7 in Italy, Sullivan added. Eighty years later, we see dictators once again attempting to challenge the order, attempting to march in Europe, Sullivan said, and that freedom-loving nations need to rally to stand against that, as we have. U.S. President Joe Biden departed for France on June 4, where he intends to participate in commemorative events marking the 80th anniversary of the D-Day in Normandy. He will also hold talks with French President Emmanuel Macron. The two leaders also are expected to discuss the Middle East. Biden has invested geopolitical capital in brokering a temporary ceasefire to the Israel-Hamas war that would see the release of hostages, even as he has maintained his staunch support for Israel and resisted European efforts to recognize a Palestinian state or investigate Israel over its handling of the war. Biden is scheduled to return to the United States on Sunday, but before he leaves France he's expected to stop at a cemetery where American soldiers who died in World War I are buried. First target for Storm Shadow and Scalp missiles in Russia, expert named them. Great Britain and France confirmed that they allowed Ukraine to use their Storm Shadow and Scalp missiles to attack targets on Russian territory. The first likely target for attack could be the enemy airbase Baltimore, from which Russian planes are striking Kharkov with cabs. This opinion was expressed on Espresso by military expert, development director of the information and consulting company Defense Express of Ukraine, Valery Ryabik. According to him, in various modifications, the operational range of these missiles can reach 460 kilometers. Therefore, the list of targets on the territory of the Russian Federation is very wide. It can be assumed that one of the first targets that could be attacked by these missiles will probably be the Russian airbase Baltimore near Voronezh. This base is located in the affected area, even if we speak about the range of use of Storm Shadow and Scalp missiles at a distance of up to 260 kilometers, said Ryabik. The expert noted that there are a lot of targets that can be hit with Storm Shadow and Scalp missiles on the territory of the Russian Federation. These could be, for example, control points of the occupiers. A strike on the Baltimore Air Base would be quite logical, since it is from this airfield that the planes that drop cabs on Kharkov take off. In particular, planes from this airbase took part in the terrorist attack on the Epicenter shopping center. Also on the list of probable targets for Storm Shadow and Scalp missiles can also include 
a large number of control points and personnel concentration areas. The characteristics of Storm Shadow and Scalp missiles are more suitable for targeted strikes against the enemy, he stated. Recall a number of Western countries have allowed the use of weapons supplied to Ukraine for attacks on Russian territory.